Hello and welcome back to Data Analysis and Visualization. I'm Javita Christie. And in this video, we are going to continue to learn how data science can be used for driving growth in e-commerce. Uh, specifically, we are going to study how you can perform testing um, on all the techniques that you have applied so far. So in the previous three videos, I have talked about how data science can be used uh, what sort of techniques can be used in order to increase um, growth in e-commerce. And now we're going to see how to test whether those techniques are working or not. So we are going to see testing your strategies. And although testing and web analytics methods are both intended to optimize performance, testing goes one layer deeper than web analytics. And web analytics is something that I have discussed extensively in uh, one of my previous videos on data science for growth in e-commerce. And you can use web analytics to get a general idea about the interests of your channel audiences and how well your marketing efforts are paying off over time. And I'm sure that if you've seen the previous videos, you know what type of marketing efforts I'm talking about. And now is the time when you get to test whether those efforts or strategies that you learned in the previous uh, videos, whether, whether or not applying those strategies is working in your favor or not. And after you have this information, you can then go in deeper to test variations on live visitors in order to gain empirical evidence about what designs and messaging your visitors actually prefer. So once you know whether a testing strategy is, is paying off or not, you can perform variations of those strategies and test on your live users to understand whether or not they are working with your live users. Testing tactics can help you optimize your website design or brand messaging or increased conversions in all layers of the funnel. And remember, I mentioned a sales funnel in, uh, in the previous video uh, where you learned what type of a funnel is there about acquisitions and active users, and then how to retain those users and generate referrals for other users. So if you have a, a good testing tactics, then they can help you to optimize your website design or just your messaging, your brand messaging, you know, email services and uh, messages sent through social media. Uh, and this could help, this optimization would help you to increase uh, conversions in all layers of that sales funnel we talked about earlier. Testing is also useful when optimizing your landing pages for user activations and revenue conversions. So you would want that the acquired users become active users and also generate revenue for you. And so testing at that point is useful even for optimizing your landing pages. Landing page is the page of your website or e-commerce site that the users are going to see first as soon as they um, uh, visit your website. So you can optimize that page in such a way that uh, in such a way by using testing techniques uh, so that you can get more user activations and revenues. Let's see some of the common types of testing in growth. The first type of testing is called A-B split testing. And an A-B split test is an optimization tactic that you can use to split variations of your website or brand messaging between sets of live audiences in order to gauge responses and decide which of the two variations performs best. Now, A-B split testing is something that I have explained before in hypothesis testing when I was explaining that topic in the previous videos. So you can go through that if you, if you do not know what A-B split testing is. But A-B split testing, I'll tell you what it does. So it is an optimization technique wherein um, you split variations of your website or brand messaging between sets of audiences. So uh, in general, you are taking a, a set of your audience and you're splitting them 
you're splitting your audience into sets and then applying various techniques on different sets to decide which of the two variations uh, performs better. So A-B split testing is the simplest testing method you can use for website or messaging optimization. It's this, if this is the simplest testing technique and there are two more that I'm going to talk about here. The next testing technique is multivariate testing, which is almost like multivariate uh, regression. And it allows you to uncover relationships, correlations, and causations between variables and outcomes. It, it tells you how uh, certain outcomes are generated based on certain variables. And in the case of multivariate testing, you're testing several conversion factors simultaneously over an extended period of time in order to uncover which factors are responsible for increased conversions. So you will have uh, lots of variables, lots of factors, and you'll be testing all of them to find out which of those factors are actually helping you in conversions in, in, in conversions in your sales funnel. Multivariate testing is more complicated than A-B split testing, but it usually provides quicker and more powerful results. The next type of testing is mouse click heat map analytics. In this type of testing, you can use the mouse click heat map to help, to help you make optimal website design and messaging choices to ensure that you're doing everything you can to keep your visitors focused and converting. So this is, um, this is where you will create a heat map for your entire website and try to find out where exactly people are clicking more. So a heat map basically, uh, as I've said before, is, is a map that shows you which area is hotter and which area is colder. So you might see probably a, a brighter red color over areas that are hot in the sense areas where people or users visiting your website are more likely to click on. And um, the areas which are cooler where people are not very likely to click on, people are not clicking much in those uh, parts of your website or web page. Uh, those will be having some cooler uh, color combinations. And then using this heat map, you can understand whether the items that you are placing on your website uh, are placed uh, placed optimally or not. So they have to be in a place that grab attention of the users. And if you have a website and you're trying to sell some product um, and trying to provide some sort of an offer on a product, you know, some 50% off or 70% off, but if you're not placing that offer in a position where the users are very likely to look at it, then it's possible that users will not look at it and they'll go to other parts of your website. So if you have indeed created this type of an offer or discount or something, uh, you can test it by checking your mouse click heat map analytics to know whether users are actually clicking on that or not. And this could help you to keep your visitors focused on your website and also to help converting them from acquired to active users and also to generate revenue. Now there are several applications. You do not need a lot of code to do all these things. There are applications that allow you to do all these uh, testing. Uh, one such application is Web Trends. You can find it on this particular link, webtrends.com. It offers you a conversion optimization feature that includes functionality for A-B split testing and multivariate testing. So it provides you both types of testings and you can go and check out the website for yourself. Next, we have Optimizely, which is available at www.optimizely.com. And it is a popular product among the growth hacking community. You can use Optimizely for multi-page funnel testing, A-B split testing, and multivariate testing amongst other things. So you have um, Optimizely, which can also allow you to perform A-B split as well as multivariate uh, testing. And it also allows you to optimize, uh, to, to use this for multiple pages of funnel testing to know whether uh, your sales funnel is working properly or not. The next application is Visual Website Optimizer, which is available at uh, vwo.com. 
and it is an excellent tool for AB split testing as well as multivariate testing. So there are so many tools available and you can just uh, go through one and pick the one that uh, go through all and pick the one that 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 is most uh, suited for your needs. Now we are going to see how you can perform testing for acquisitions. Uh, remember acquisitions is the first layer of, of your sales funnel. So this is where you try to attract people to your website. You try to attract audience for your website. So this is the first layer. And after that, there are other layers. We're going to see them one by one, how testing can be done for all these layers. First, we are going to see, however, for acquisitions. Acquisitions testing provides feedback on how well your content performs with prospective users in your assorted channels. So you might have many types of channels for your e-commerce uh, platform, like you could have social media channels, you could have email services, as well as your own website. And uh, when you perform testing for acquisitions on all these channels, then it gives you a feedback of how well your content is doing with these users how well um, your content is, how attractive it is in getting more users to your channels and eventually to your e-commerce platform. So you can use acquisitions testing to help compare your messages performance in each channel, helping you optimize your messaging on a per channel basis. So like we studied earlier that you have many channels uh, to promote your uh, e-commerce business, and if you want to check whether your, uh, your messages, which you're posting on all those channels are working in attracting more audience, then you should do acquisitions testing so that you can know on which channel your messages are working well and on which they are not. So you could compare your own uh, message, you could compare between your own channels, whether your messages on each of those channels um, are working. If you want to optimize the performance of your brand's published images, then you can use acquisition testing to compare image performance ac across your channels as well. So if you have, um, if you have, uh, if you, if your brand is publishing lots of images related to your products, you could perform acquisitions testing to even find out if, if uh, those images are performing well across your channels or not. And lastly, if you want to increase your acquisitions through increases in user referrals, then use testing to help optimize your referrals messaging for the referrals channels. So after acquisition, we have the next layer, which is activation, and then we have retention. Now the retained users which are available, they are the ones who are going to refer your channel or your, um, uh, your brand to someone else. So you want to make sure that this referrals messaging, uh, which is available for the referrals channel, that that is also working properly. And so that is another uh, way, where another thing that you want to test uh, while making acquisitions. Acquisition testing can help you begin to understand the specific preferences of prospective users on a channel by channel basis. You can use AB split testing to improve your acquisitions in the following ways. And we are going to see some of those ways now. The first way is social messaging optimization. So after you use social analytics to deduce the general interests and preferences of users in each of your social channels, you can then further optimize your brand messaging along those channels by using AB split testing to compare your headlines and social media messaging within each channel. So you could use AB split testing because social analytics is, some, is, is, is a part of web analytics that allows you to understand your audience interests. So uh, your audience's interests. So once you know that your audience is interested in this particular area, you would start posting things related to that area. So if you find that people on Twitter are most interested in knowing about um, gadgets, electronics, then you'd start posting about electronics that your e-commerce is selling on Twitter. And when you do that, after doing that, you would want to know if that is actually working or not, if, if that is optimizing your, uh, your brand or not, if, if that is helping you to acquire more users. 
So in that case, you would use AB split testing to compare all the headlines and social media messaging uh, which you are posting in each of your channels so that you, you would understand which of them is performing uh, well and which of them is not performing well. Next you can do is brand image and messaging optimization. So you should compare and optimize the respective performances of images along each of your social channels. So it's not just about messaging, but images as well. Some images might be performing better on Twitter and some might be performing better on Facebook. So you'd want to know which images exactly are uh, working well with uh, Twitter audiences. And, and to do that, you would again want to perform testing for acquisitions over the images and um, messaging optimization. Next is optimized referral messaging. So test the effectiveness of your email messaging at converting new user referrals. So you should uh, be able to test whether people are, uh, this is where you will be able to test whether people are actually subscribing to your brand and after subscribing to your brand, are they able to refer your brand? So this is another form of testing, you know, uh, Oftentimes when we visit a website or we are using a product, we get we get some sort of a message or a survey kind of a thing that asks you how likely you are to refer this brand or this product to a friend or a colleague. And at that time, it, you answer on a scale of one to ten, you're supposed to select a point. And that's exactly what referral messaging testing is all about. Now let's see testing for activations. We've already talked about uh, testing for acquisitions, which means acquiring more users, more audiences for your brand, you know, attracting more people to just visit your uh, e-commerce website. But now we are talking about activations, how to make those acquired users active. And so if you have seen the previous videos, of course, you know the strategies that you can apply to create active users from acquired users. Now we are going to see how you can perform testing to uh, how you can test those strategies that you learned earlier. So activation testing provides feedback on how well your website and its content perform in converting acquired users to active users. The results of activation testing can help you optimize your website and landing pages for maximum signups and subscriptions. So this is your goal uh, when whenever you are having a brand that you want to sell, this is the goal to, to increase signups and subscriptions. You don't just want people to come to your e-commerce platform, look at it and then close it and go away. You want them to be active users, to become active users. So this testing will help you analyze how well your uh, activation strategies are working to get gain you more signups and subscriptions. So let's see how you'd use testing methods to optimize user activation growth. Number one is website conversion optimization. Make sure your website is optimized for user activation conversions. You can use AB split testing, multivariate testing, or a mouse click heat map data visualization to help you optimize your website design. So you should have uh, things placed like, you know, sign up or subscribe. Those kinds of buttons uh, should be uh, space, uh, placed very strategically on your website or web page so that people are actually, uh, you know, noticing those things and are more likely to click on it. Also, you could probably even prompt users to do that, to subscribe or sign up to your uh, websites. Oftentimes I've, I've noticed that when I visit a website uh, to get some information, uh, they probably hide part of the information and then uh, when I click on read more, then they immediately give me a, a, a prompt that tells me, you know, uh, to subscribe or to sign up uh, to the website in order to uh, read more about it. So this is one of the techniques and you'd want to know if this technique is actually working. So you would have to perform your AB split testing and multivariate testing as well as mouse click heat map visualization to understand whether all these techniques that you have applied are working or not. 
Next, we have landing pages. If your landing page has a simple call to action that prompts guests to subscribe to your email list, then you can use A-B split testing for simple design optimization of this page and the call to action messaging. So landing pages are very important because they are the first page, uh, first pages that people are going to view when they visit your e-commerce website. And that's why there has to be some simple call to action on your landing page that would uh, prompt users or guests which are who are just visiting your website for the first time to actually subscribe to your email list or uh, social media and to do the, uh, to check whether or not your landing page is effective in doing this you could use a b split testing uh, to know how you can design how, how you can optimize that design Next, we are going to see testing for retentions. So once users are acquired and they are active, that means they have taken some action towards uh, being part of your brand. Then we talk about retention, how you can retain, re, uh, retain those users to um, be on your website and, and you know, eventually to generate revenue for you. So retentions testing provides feedback on how well your blog post and email headlines are performing among your base of activated users. And usually emails are a very effective way of um, attracting audiences because uh, often people ignore, people tend to ignore things posted on social media. I mean, how many, how many of you are following um, Amazon's social media sites? Very few people. But however, you would be subscribed to their email list and which is why whenever they have some sale going on, you will probably receive an email and uh, that could prompt you to, you know, uh, visit their website if you find that the sale is really attractive. So uh, retentions testing, it allows you to test whether those email headlines, the, the email headline is the subject line that is there on your email. Uh, that you send to your users, to uh, send to your activated users. And uh, that headline has to be very catchy, something that users would want to click on. If they do not open the email, then the email is pretty much useless and eventually will end up in the spam folders of, of the users. So you don't want that. You want your emails to be opened and which is why you would have to do a, a retentions testing to check whether those blog posts and email headlines are doing well or not. If you want to optimize your headlines so that active users want to continue active engagements with your brand, then test the performance of your user retention tactics. Let us see how you can use uh, testing methods to optimize user retention growth. Number one is headline optimization. You can use A-B split testing to optimize the headlines of your blog posts and email marketing messages in such a way that users can would, would uh, open them, would like to open them. Test different headline varieties within your different channels and then use the varieties that perform the best. Email open rates and RSS view rates are ideal metrics to track the performance of each headline variation. So often there is an email open rate software that you can use to find out how many people are uh, opening your emails. So you could, uh, instead of just putting one headline, you could you know, bifurcate your users and, and pass several headlines and find out which headline is doing the best, which headline is, is the one that is opened the most. So that way you can know this headline works best and that's the headline that uh, that you will use uh, for future purposes. So it's a very effective and simple way of testing uh, headlines and performing headline optimization. Next, we have conversion rate optimization. Use A-B split testing on the messaging within your emails to decide which messaging variety more, effect variety more effectively gets your activated users to engage with your brand. So, and, and the more effective your email messaging is at getting activated users to take a desired action, the greater your user retention rates. 
So this is conversion rate optimization, and this is testing not just the headline of the email, but the type of message that the email is giving. Because once the user has opened the email, the message within also has to be attractive enough for the user to actually click on uh, one of the links presented in the email. So you would have to test a variety of such messaging techniques and perform A-B split testing to know which variety, which technique is working better and uh, hence be able to optimize your conversion rate. Now we are going to talk about testing for revenue growth. So we have talked about acquisitions, how to test for acquisitions. We have talked about how to test for activations. We've talked about how to test for retentions. And now we are uh, talking about revenue growth. Revenue growth is the layer in the sales funnel where the retained users, the users that you have retained are actually purchasing something from your brand. And uh, that is why they are generating a revenue for you. So you want to perform revenue testing because it gauges the performance of revenue generating landing pages, e-commerce pages, and brand messaging. And revenue testing methods can help you optimize your landing and e-commerce pages for sales conversions. Let us see how you can use uh, testing methods to optimize revenue growth. So number one is website conversion optimization. You can use AB split testing, multivariate testing, or a mouse click heat map data visualization to help optimize your sales page and shopping cart design for revenue generating conversions. So probably we, we tend to overlook this, but sometimes uh, just the design of your shopping cart, maybe the logo or the way your shopping cart is accessed might actually increase or decrease revenue for you. So you'd have to test multiple designs of the shopping cart in order to understand if, if a certain design is doing better than other designs. So that is called website conversion optimization where you can test for revenue growth. Next is landing page optimization. So if you have a landing page with a simple call to action that prompts guests to make a purchase, then you can use AB split testing for design optimization. Um, if, if your e-commerce website is having some products which are you know, featured products and um, directly below those products you have a button for buying the product uh, because uh, that that is a featured product where you are providing a lot of discount then you would want to know through ab split testing if people are actually making that purchase from the landing page itself right so that is where you could test for revenue growth you could you, you could test multiple strategies of putting a product on the landing page itself uh, and seeing if users are actually uh, more likely to buy that product from there. And this is where I'm going to end this video and I'll be back with the next one. So I'll see you there and thank you for watching.